So, I just finished this little gem of a book. Um, a book that I've found very hard to pick up and read um, continuously and not just like a tiny little chapter here, a tiny little chapter there. I don't want to say it's a bad book because it's not a bad book, it's a wonderful book, but it is a sad book. Let's, let's try to summarise the thing. So, um, let's see, so I need to check because I keep forgetting the name. So, we have Pia. Pia, um, is someone who has passed. Uh, basically, we see little to nothing at all of her, uh, because she is the friend that passed. She, um, yeah. So, we have her best friends, Vic and Zaja, Zaja? I, I don't know how to say her name, I'm, it's confusing me. Um, their best friends, her best friends, and also the love of her life, uh, Mike. Um, <laughs> it feels weird saying it in that order, instead of, uh, you know, Mike's love of her li love, the love of Mike's life, and Vicky and Jaja's best friend. That's just how I did it, for some reason, I don't know. But we alternate between those three perspectives, so they all have different things going on. So yes, so Vicky is married and she's kind of a stay-at-home mom uh, to two kids and she's kind of struggling with finding her own identity within that. And then we have Jaja who is newly engaged and kind of in the past she's been like jumping from man to man just to, you know, not stay put. Uh, so she's kind of feeling that, is this actually for me kind of deal. And then we have Mike who has lost the love of his life and is feeling, you know, lost. I mean, they're all feeling lost. Um, but they come through and in the end of it, they're all there for each other in different ways. So <laughs> they kind of very randomly on a drunken night where they are packing up uh, Pia's things to either donate or whatever. Because <laughs> it's time for that. Sometimes you have to let some things go to be able to move on so on uh but they're doing that but while doing that and reminiscing about the past and so on they drink and kind of decide to go on a massive trip because why not um where is it they go they go hiking peru they go trekking in peru um and they see something they see a lot of things mountains and they see they see like some something that i can't remember what it's called i want to say it's a museum but it's well it is kind of but it's one of the oh ooh, i'm lost anyway um so they go <laughs> um so we we start the book it's all well not fun times but introductions and then we have three months later it is three months isn't it i can't find it out anyway they go on this trek to Peru, because why not go to a trek to Peru? I mean, sure. <laughs> but on this trek, they not only rediscover things about themselves, you know, things that uh, may be keeping them from moving on in life or just moving forward, not necessarily like forgetting P and stuff, because, I mean, she's one part of the whole equation, but also they have other things in their life going on besides a lost best friend. I mean, that's sad enough, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but they do, they rediscover things about themselves and figure things out that they maybe didn't really understand about themselves before. Um, so it's, it's a lot, it's a book about a lot of things, <laughs> but it is about, it is a lot about grieving and moving past that not forgetting about the the grief and all that because you can't really but you can like like put it to the side while still moving forward not having it drag you back does that make sense um this is not grief <laughs> grief therapy video um that, that's a very different topic and I'm, I'm not qualified enough to talk too much about that optimism hope and chance that's basically three keywords for this for this book um 
I loved it, but I did cry a lot. <laughs> um, it is that kind of book where you will shed tears unless you're completely dead inside. I do joke that I have, they, ha they have a very deep dark soul and I am completely dead inside. Uh, sometimes yes, but um, other times I'm overly emotional and books like this will bring it out and then I will sob for ages and it's not good for my head because a lot of sobbing gives me headaches. <laughs> Not the reason I have a lot of headaches, but it does give me headaches. Anyway, so that's that. Let's talk about Millie Bobby Brown for a second. So she's a Stranger Things. She's ha she's like a blooming actor, career producer, director, writer. I d I don't know what she does in that world, but she's she's doing a lot. And then she has her. A beauty brand, which I, I've never tried any of the products, but I hear they mostly are good. I don't know. Um, I've, I've heard good things about it. So, uh, it begs the question, what can't she do? <laughs> so, when a book by Millie Bobby Brown comes up on the Waterstones website, because that's where I was, um, I was like, Millie Bobby Brown? the actor, the beauty person, she's written a book. Well, now this is a thing as well. So does her name need to be this big? I mean, it's this decent, like, same size to the title of the book. But, um, especially when we go into this and we see with... Kathleen McGurl. <laughs> That's a pretty wicked name, by the way. Um, did I just turn this around? Yes, I did. There we go. Um, so, yeah. How much has she actually written? Um, I'm going to say probably not a whole lot, and that the this Kathleen person is the one who actually wrote the book. Um, so from what I've heard, basically the idea of the book comes from Millie Bobby Brown's grandmother something. Um, and it's basically her story, but told in fiction. Uh, so I don't know how much of it is real, how much of it is, you know, fiction and all that. It doesn't really matter because in the end, it's 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 a book. Um, so it takes place during World War II, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of the wars, any war, um, because... Uh, it's just depressing and yeah the depressing so basically we are in london with this family most nights they need to go down um what's it called what's the station called again bethnal green <laughs> so basically they need to go down bethnal green tube station um where they'll stay throughout the Thingerding, the bombing and stuff. Um, yeah, that that's that's basically it. Um, so there's all the bombing and stuff going on, and they're losing family members left and right, and friends and whatnot. And basically, they they just try to live their lives, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Why did you have to go bomb London again? Hmm, Germany. Hmm? Yeah? I'm not blaming Germany, the country. I'm blaming said person who we don't like. Yeah, so why did you have to go bomb people? This is basically a story about just regular people during the war and what's going on around them while they're trying to like live their life as normally as possible while still having to every now and again go down a bomb shelter b 
because bombs are flying around. Yeah. Um, so, what's her name? Nelly. Millie? Nelly? Interesting. So, um, we just follow Nelly around. Basically, her trying to live her life, falling in love, losing said love, falling in love again, and then mystery. How will it all end? So basically, the book starts, like, it's like a prologue of um, Nelly being way old, coming back to Bethnal Green to visit a friend, and then we go back in time to when the war actually was. In the end, it's, it's, we're back at the beginning. So, most of the book had me thoroughly depressed because it's the war. I didn't know it was about the war. It's not really about the war, but it involves the war. I didn't know that, picking it up. I just wanted to know if Millie Bobby Brown could write a book. Turns out she didn't even write the book, so I would test that. Um, and then the romance element to it. It was upsetting for several reasons. It was a short book. It was um, kind of decently fast read book. Read, read book. But if I had known beforehand what it was about, I would not have picked it up. Um, mostly because I, I don't like the war. I don't like books that involve war. Um, like any of our, our real life wars. It's one thing if there's like a fantasy book and there's a bunch of fairies having a war. That's a different kind of... I don't really enjoy those wars either, but it doesn't feel as real as something that's actually happened and then talked about. I don't really like the historical things, okay? I don't like knowing things. <laughs> I don't like, I don't, I don't really like reading or seeing uh, stories about based on true events. That's what I'm trying to get. <laughs> like, no, not really my thing. But, you know, I read it. Yeah. The glares, honestly. Where to even start with this one? So, Gallant. V.E. Schwab. It is, yeah, V.E. Schwab. I had to check if it was Victoria Schwab or V.E. I never, I never know which one it is. And honestly, it's the same person. <sighs> anyway, Gallant. Where do I even start? So, Olivia. So, Olivia has grown up in this school for girls, but she is nearing her, well, her high age of 16 years old <laughs> and she's near on the age where she needs to leave because she's too old to stay and just so happens that when she does have to leave a mysterious letter arrives saying basically come home we miss you uh <laughs> love from your uncle not those exact words really and um, not really that but at least the come home part so it turns out the letter wasn't even from his uncle because uh, his uncle her uncle because he's been dead for the last year or so so it wasn't him so who was it mysterious the only thing olivia really has is this old journal from her mum which it doesn't really tell her much of anything, but it does say to keep safe, stay away from Gallant. Nothing else about that. Turns out the estate, <laughs> yeah, the estate where her family heirs from is called Gallant. And that's where she should have stayed away from. But she sent there, so now she's there. Yay. The thing about Olivia is she sees ghosts. Yes, or ghouls, as I believe she calls them throughout. And, and you know, and Gallant uh, definitely is full of them. She's seen them from before, from the school and such. But, yeah, Gallant is um, 
stock full of them and it turns out there's this door which leads into the shadow well which is basically her world but the shadow version so it's it's where all the ghouls hang out mostly not really but yeah it's it's that part where she's supposed to stay away from i want to say this is like a very easy read ghost story it's quite short as well so it's it's not like it took all that much time to read it was very fast read i'm not gonna lie yeah i really want to say it's a very easy easy read ghost story that's basically how i want to summarize the book because there's not a whole lot i can say more than i've just said and even that is a little bit spoilerous but not not really i did have a good time reading it i can definitely see where ve slash victoria schwab's writing hails from um, so the only book I've read of hers previously is Adi LaRue and I really liked that book. It was potentially a bit longer than it actually needed to be but I really liked the writing in it. I really liked how it flowed and how it was almost like it was like a romanticized wording kind of a deal if that makes any sense and it's the same with this one uh, although this one is a lot shorter than Adi LaRue um and kind of semi different subject matter uh but still in the fantasy era i don't know it's just something about her writing that just grabbed me and pulled me in although saying that if i were to rate the book i would probably rate it a three star and i did and this is why i don't rate books really but it's not that it's not a good book it's just that it does miss something to it all uh, and I mean, I would probably rate Ad LaRue that as well, like a three. Yeah, there's not a whole lot I can say about this book. I did like it. Not the greatest book in the world, but also very easy read, very entertaining. There was this mystery that needed to be solved, and it was the ghostly kind of mystery. And I ate that up. I ate that up, okay. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. The unfortunate side effects of heartbreak and magic. Um, I'd never heard of this book. Um, I'd never seen it. I'd never heard anyone speak of it. Uh, I just randomly saw it on a shelf in the library. And I thought, you know, that kind of looks interesting. I mean, it kind of looks like my cup of tea kind of book. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to figure out what, how I was going to like say what this book is about so i read the blurb on the back and i wonder who wrote this blurb because this blurb gives it gives off the wrong impression it's kind of wrong it's kind of wrong on the back so i went on goodreads and it's different on goodreads it makes more sense there but also it's it's not really telling yeah so on Goodreads, it will say that it's a book for like Gilmer Girls and Practical Magic, as in it is a small town and there is some magic. <laughs> That's basically it. So what was her name again? Sadie. Um, we followed Sadie throughout. She has, she and her grandmother, they open up a little, I guess, bakery, cafe kind of thing. Um, so she does her baking and she puts her magic in the baking and yeah the the different cakes and stuff will give you different like you you'll get like uh, a whip of energy or you'll get like a, I don't know I can't I can't think of things right now for some reason anyway um anyway all the different cakes and stuff will give you different kinds of magic not abilities but they'll give you something some something like energy which is apparently the only thing i can think of um wisdom i, I guess so she later on in the book she bakes like scones i don't know if it's the scones or if it's like the honey thingy um that that you put on things that, that like gives a bit of truth telling but also the person who's like the truth telling thing imaging 
uh, doesn't actually remember having said all these things later. So I, d I don't know really how it works. Um, the magic in it is a bit... It's not really clear <laughs> how everything works, which is fine in general, because, I mean, magic is supposed to be this this thing that's around us in a way and it shouldn't be perfectly clear because there's supposed to be that mystery they the yeah that whiff of mystery behind it anyway so she runs this little bakery cafe um but yeah in to town walks her ex uh so so having magic also comes with a cost and in Sadie's case it means she's gonna suffer four heartbreaks and then she's gonna lose her magic and so Into town walks her first heartbreak, which is her ex. He's back in town after ten years of being gone <sighs> And her second heartbreak being her twin brother Seth left town willy-nilly He didn't say anything. He just left and now she's like well, she only has two heartbreaks left. She's gonna lose this big thing she has. Basically, her brother calls her one night. Her grandmother, who is the person she is closest to in the entire world currently because of her twin brother left uh, and she hasn't heard from him for like a year or so. Um, well, her grandmother, she has cancer. She is about to die. She only has a couple of weeks left and now she's all hell is breaking loose in her life if she feels like she's not really she doesn't have a grasp of things this book is definitely in the cozy fantasy genre thing imaging because nothing big really happens it's really about anything but it is about something so having read the afterwards the acknowledgments acknowledgement i think it was um basically <clears throat> the author Brianne, she wrote this book as a way to process her own grandmother passing and her grief behind that and having read that this book makes more sense we'll have scenes and in this scene we'll go from point A to point D and just skipping point B and C and you'll be like what the fuck how do we get from here to here we'll still make sense but also we'll be like but we're missing bits. We're missing bits. I kind of need those bits in between. It helps to make it a better story. Yes. Um, so we have lots of, we have a lot of missing bits here and there. And then there's like the witches, but they go to Christian church. How does that work? That doesn't make any sense. So there's lots of things that make no sense whatsoever. Um, the plot, what is the plot and the plot line and the, the, the tiny things you need in a plot to make it make sense? Yeah, it doesn't have that. <laughs> and it has really, really long chapters. Now, saying all that, I did think it was cute, but there were a lot of things missing and a lot of things that didn't make any sense, like witches going to Christian church Witches aren't Christian, by the way. Yeah. No. I feel like this book needed a really, really good editor. This is not a romance, but it is about love. How true. How true. Let's try to summarise what the book is about before I talk about my feelings, because I have a lot of feelings about this book. Uh, but it's okay. Two kids. Sam and Sadie, they meet randomly in a hospital, <laughs> because why not? Sadie is there because her sister is sick, and Sam is there because he has a non-functional foot. It's broken, I guess, but it's severely broken. Um, so, they meet. Sam hasn't spoken for like six weeks, and then Sadie appears, and it's like, best friends instantly, instant best friends um so they start to bond through games and such they um they both love to game they're 12 years old gaming is life this is like um 
I think it was like 80, 1987, so it's early days of games. But then something happens and, well, they don't speak for a number of years. Until <laughs> one day, they just, so they're both from California, but one day they sort of meet up again. So uh, Sam is going to Harvard and Sadie is going to MIT, which are ba basically next door in Boston. They've crossed the country and are now in the same place again. What are the odds? I mean, I'd call it fate, but you know. Um, it is a story. <laughs> events lead to other events, which leads to them starting to create a game together. And it's basically where the whole journey takes off. So this book, this book does something that I'm not really usually a fan of, because this book, we jump through time, like a lot. We jump back in time so we have we have a sort of timeline where we uh w w which is the present for us throughout the story but it's not really the present because we have a narrator that's narrating from the future so every now and again uh from you know our little timeline we will go back in time and we will go forwards into the future um yeah and it doesn't do it um, it doesn't do it like from chapter to chapter, which is usually if if you're gonna jump through time That is usually how I want it to happen because then you can go like um, December 1970 they're not in the 70s in this one, but yeah, and then you can go November 2011 I don't know. I'm making I'm making dates up now, uh, but you you can state which time we're in um, but no, this book does it, <laughs> this book does it in the scene. So we'll, we'll be in a scene and then we'll go like backwards and think about something that happened. And then all of a sudden we go back and then we're in the future and now we're back again. Um, so, so it's like, I'm sitting here talking about this book, but, uh, I start to talk about something that happened to me last week, and then I will go back again and talk about this book. And then, I will jump back in the future, which I can't, because this is now present. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that, usually for me, is a big no, because that is confusing as hell. But, but, Gabrielle Seven did this so seamlessly that it just feels natural. <laughs> it just feels so bloody natural. And I wasn't confused about what time we were currently thinking about. Um, I, f because I think that's probably the easiest way to talk about it, to explain it. Um, so, hats off because that was bloody amazing. Amazingly done. Wow. So their friendship is, we do get other people in later, but it starts with them. Um, so their friendship is very centered around games. And throughout the book, in the beginning, where, when they meet at the hospital and such, a lot of the like classic games are mentioned like Super Mario and Donkey Kong and then we have what were the other ones that I don't have never actually played because it's not really my ideal kind of game but uh, it was like Tekken and that's the only one EverQuest is that one I don't know EverQuest might actually be something I would probably play anyway um, but it was a lot of those or Mortal Kombat that's also one. Uh, I've never really played those punching games. <laughs> Let's call them that. They've not really been for me, but I do. I have played a lot of Super Mario. I've never actually played Donkey Kong, like properly played Donkey Kong. Um, but I played a lot of Super Mario. I played a lot of, well, Zelda is mentioned. I'm a big fan of Zelda. Um, yeah. So loads of the games <laughs> that are real, um, that I mentioned that are actually games in real life, I got a bit nostalgic. I'm not gonna lie, because a lot of the games are games I grew up playing and I could 
to this day still go play them and feel that yes um <laughs> and there's this scene where so it's in the beginning when they meet um so there's this scene um where sam is playing super mario and then he lets sadie play but sadie's like okay so how do you get him on top of the flagpole uh and he explains and it's like and then we <laughs> we get this little insert where it's this was before the internet where you had to know someone who knew someone <laughs> who knew what to do uh and i was like wow okay <laughs> it had me laughing because i don't i don't really know why but i knew how to do that flagpole thing and no one told me because i didn't really have gamer friends when i was little i was like okay how did i know did i just know it <laughs> apparently maybe i don't know anyway that was just a side note but yeah so a lot of their friendship is revolved uh and centered around games but the book is so much more than that. You have the the love and friendship, the love of from friend, <laughs> the love you have in friendships and the friendships that become family. And it's so so many things. When I finished it, well, well, while I was reading it rather, but when I finished it, I was like, yeah. I definitely understand why this book is so hyped and well deserved, well deserved hype. This book, mind blowing, mind blowing, so good, so easy, it has everything. The games they create, I want them to be real because I want to play them because they sound like a lot of fun. So give me these games, <laughs> give me these games, someone create these games. Oh. Anyway, um, so while I was reading this book, I I got like bursts of creativity for creative things that I don't really know how to create. I was in the middle of it and I was like, I want to create a game. I don't know how to create a game. I feel like I'm very late into learning how to create a game from scratch. I'm gonna have to find people who knows people who knows I don't know and at one point I wanted to start writing and I was like why am I not writing oh yes I'm reading this book uh, let me just finish this book and then we'll see I don't know I got so many I wanted to do so many things I just wanted to create things um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to create. And I feel like this is a problem for me in general, like a life problem. I've always just wanted to do things, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do things that wasn't the thing I was doing currently, which was school at that point. I didn't really want to be in school, okay? I was bored a lot and I didn't like it. I was bored, I was bullied yeah tell me why i didn't want to be in school highly highly recommend pick up this book it's not just all about games if you are a bit of a gamer you will probably love this book because you will get that nostalgia and yeah but even if you haven't played a single game in your life it's not all just about games i keep saying games but it's bloody brilliant. It's bloody brilliant. It's bloody brilliant, I tell ya. It's bloody brilliant. It has a lot of inspiration from a whole lot of different things. There's like Emily's Emily Dickinson poems, there's like Shakespeare stuff. So many things, so many things. Go pick this book up. Yeah. <laughs>